How are you doing there, guys? We're here in the garage. You're probably asking, why are we in the garage? You're supposed to be downstairs in the basement working out, training. Well, we're in the garage here because I need to do some work on my bike. Now, before there was training videos, there was motorcycle um, project um, videos that I made. And... Uh, I was not going to make any more videos and just stick with the training, but uh, something came uh, across here that I thought would help a bunch of guys out there um, doing uh, their work on their bikes. So I thought I'd just make another video here. Um, what happened is that I um, had my garage door open uh, one night and uh, a cat got in to the garage and uh, I closed the door not knowing the cat was in here and uh, I very seldom opened the door here in the garage so I don't even know how many days the cat was stuck here in the, in the garage um, until I opened the door one day to get it go into the garage from the house I put the light on and there it was the cat and I uh, staring at each other because he was like sitting on my bike uh, so we were like, uh, you know, eye to eye, and he jumped, I jumped, and uh, the reason I call it a he because the sucker was big, it was a big cat. Anyway, so uh, I opened the door, the cat uh, walked around the garage a little bit, and then he took off. And uh, so uh, seeing him on my bike, I went around and looked at the bike, and um, I saw a lot of paw prints on my paint. Uh, normally I put a cover on the bike for the winter, but uh, I decided not, not to because it doesn't really get dirty in here. And uh, I wanted to keep, uh, in case it got humid, I wanted to keep the circulation on the bike um, without having a cover on the bike. So uh, we've been having um, a warm winter here. But uh, come spring, it hasn't been warm enough to ride. And um, there's a lot of guys out here that have been riding. I can hear the bikes running down the road down here. But uh, uh, getting old here, I don't feel like riding when it's cold out. And I have to bundle up like, like uh, the Michelin Man. So uh, I've been waiting for it to warm up. So about three weeks ago, um, I got the bike uh, out here in the middle of the garage and I detailed it. And uh, I was going down uh, to the back wheel and uh, I looked over at the uh, back tail light and I saw a wire broken. Um, and I knew something like that could happen because the wire for this tail light wasn't very uh, uh, sturdy. It looked like it was going to break eventually. So. Um, Anyway, I think the cat, when he jumped off the bike, because he jumped off to the uh, left side of the bike, I think when he jumped off, his paw uh, hit the tire uh, side of the bike and uh, broke the wire to the taillight. So I went around uh, and checked on the internet to see if I can find... Uh, the uh, wires that I needed. At first I wanted to see if I can get just the contact for the end of the wire and I couldn't find any anywhere. So I ended up finding the whole wire harness or the pigtail for the light itself. Then I get the uh, I get the harness, the pigtail in the mail. It took like about a week. So now this is uh, a week and a half because it took a few days for me to actually find uh, somewhere to buy this. So then I get it in the mail, I open up the package and I come to find out the wires are too short. The wire doesn't go all the way to where the uh, plug is that I, that I made. And what I would have to do is, is make a butt splice and have a butt connector on there and I don't want that. That's that's like a second, a second uh, 
part of the wire disconnected, um, actually, because um, the butt connectors are notorious for uh, making your wires rust uh, when it gets humid. So I went out again and uh, checked the internet and I found the ends finally, the connectors for the end of the uh, wires. And um, But the only thing is, there's another week wasted. So now, this is three weeks now. I haven't been able to ride my bike. It's been nice weather. And I'm still waiting for the uh, connectors for the wire. So um, what I'm doing here now is I'm going to start taking everything apart so when it does come in, I can just dive right into the job and get this thing done. So I'm going to take you guys on a little journey here on how to uh, put some uh, ends on wires and, and rewire the, uh, the light and make a pigtail for it. So uh, let's uh, get to the bike and show you what's going on. Okay, so we're uh, right here now is the light, the tail light, and uh, here's the wire that broke. Um, and you can see how small it is. I think it's a uh, 16 gauge, 12 gauge. And uh, the wire, the light connects to the uh, bracket like this, and this wire goes in like this. And what happened was when he jumped off, he hit this and he broke this wire. So I made a pigtail for this. And uh, the wire with the that came with the light was long enough here. You see here, here's the the plug part, the pigtail I made. So, uh, but with the new part, this only gave me eight inches of wire, so it might only come about here. Then I would have to butt connect the two wires together, which gave me a bulky looking, you know, run here. Uh, plus, like I said, even with the shrink wrap around there, they do tend have a tendency of uh, of rusting when it's when it gets humid. So, what I'm gonna have to do now because this plug, I, I ran this wire through here, and uh, and before I put the plug on, um, the wires were able to go through these holes, but right now with the plug, it won't go through. Oh, wait a second, maybe it will. Okay. All right then, I don't have to cut the wire. All right, so what I'm gonna do here now then, I'm gonna have to take this other clamp off of here. So. All right, uh, I'm not gonna waste your time with me I'm screwing this off here, so uh, I'll be back. I got the clamps off, so now I'm going to slip this through here. Then I'll have a better, once I get it to the uh, bench, I'll be able to show you guys exactly. happen here. Boy, I can't believe it fits through there. Okay, so now we'll go to the bench and uh, I'll show you what's going on. So we're here at the bench and here's the uh, the light with the uh, lens off of it. Now, as you can see, this is the uh, stop tail light, and this is the license plate light. So, the one that broke was the license plate light. So, the bulb comes out like this, and then you have a spring 
inside it keeps the uh, bulb tight into the socket so now here's the top one so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just slip this completely out of here I'm going to have to cut this off anyway and I have a new plug I'm going to use so I'm not going to worry about it but um, so what happens is when it goes in there into the uh, plug the bulb touches this right and the spring keeps it tight and I hope this is on the you're seeing it guys because I had no viewfinder where I can tell where I'm at here so the bulb hits this connects to this you got contact and the spring keeps it tight in the socket so when I first got it I noticed the wires were kind of uh, not that great so what I thought I would do is as you can see here just by the wire just moving back and forth you can see it's fraying already see that and that's going to break eventually too so it's just a matter of time plus the bike shakes a lot of vibration and that could have helped make it because this was stationary so there's no reason why it should be like that in there except for the you know, vibration going like that so I what I did was I took electrical tape and I wrapped it around here with some shrink tubing so it would like you know reinforce that plus give it a little bit of uh, give when it moved with the, you know but it didn't work and plus it's not really this is a vintage light, so to speak. So what they did was they gave the, uh, uh, they put on here the uh, cloth uh, insulation instead of today's, you know, rubber insulation. So that starts fraying too after a while. So anyway, I would have had to replace it eventually it looks like, because I didn't even notice that until I pulled this back. Alright, so let's put this off to the side for now. And I'm gonna show you guys. So I went on the internet and I looked for the exact uh, same uh same uh same pigtail. Uh, you know, without having to buy the light, the whole light and everything. So it took a little bit to find it and I found a company that uh, sold them and they carry these uh, I guess it's Groot grout, um, wires and, and uh, this is it right here so this is the part that broke off here's the one from the original so uh, that broke off So here you can tell, see much more, the wire is a lot more uh, sturdy. And same thing here, even the wiring, the, the strands and strands are uh, a lot thicker. So uh, then I come to find out that uh, you can see here, it's not long enough. So I'm thinking, okay, so now I'm going to have to put a butt connector and splice it together, and then I'm going to have, now I'm, not, I'm only going to have the plug on that end here, you know, the plug on the end, but then I'm going to have a, a splice in the middle, which I don't want, I didn't want that. I want this to look professional and, uh, you know, like it came from the factory. So um, I went back on the internet and I, just look for these ends here 
these contacts. I can just crimp it to my own wire. And uh, I found it. And if, if I would have looked a little longer, I wouldn't even have to buy this. I just would have got, I just would have got the uh, contact because I have wire already here just sitting in my toolbox and I could use these wires to uh, you know to make my my pigtail so um, also what I am going to do is though I'm going to use the uh, this little plastic washer because the uh, contact fits right in there real nice and it's thick sturdy now the one from uh, The one from the original is, uh, oh, I had it here. Anyway, the one from the original is thin and it's, you know, not as thick. So, and then also the spring from the original, you see how soft it is? It's here. The spring is more sturdy. See it? So I'll hold the bolt with the vibration from the bike and all. It'll hold the uh, it'll hold the, the bulb in tighter, which will stop the vibration. So what I want to do now, once I uh, oh yeah, and while I'm filming this or v making videos here, the uh, ends came in the mail. So we'll we'll open a box as soon as I uh, get sh through showing this. So what I'm gonna do. I bought some Plasti Dip. It's a rubberized uh, um, mixture that uh, you can put on tools and stuff to give yourself, you know, handles to grip with. Well, what I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to tape this off, in which I'll, I'll I'll do it live here for you guys. I'm going to tape this off here and tape it around here and tape just a little bit around here. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to dip it in here. I'm going to dip it in here. And then, I'm going to have the, the Plasti uh, dip probably about up to here. So, it'll cover the inside of the wire. Alright. And also, it'll be and it completely stationary in here and that way when the vibration goes see how, how it's going like this that won't happen anymore it'll be all one solid rubber you know case encased and then when it rub it's go be able to go back and forth while actually moving the wire part here this whole part you know will be able to move if need be so that's what I'm going to do so that's it with this, and here's the other one. Uh, glad I bought two of them, because I didn't know this wire um, on here. Didn't know this wire on here was frayed. I went to O'Reilly's, they had them, um, but I already ordered it, so I didn't know that O'Reilly sold these two. But um, anyway, um, it takes forever for the uh, for them to come in through the you know shipping, uh, so you can see now the uh, the original part, and then this new part. So that's what I'm going to do to keep it from uh, coming apart again. And let's see uh, what happened here. Let's see how these parts. I'm cr I'm, I'm crossing my fingers now. That these are right because it's hard to tell, you know, by just a picture on the internet. No, I lied. 
It's the same size. It's just that this is crimped and this is not. Okay, good. I bought a few extra just in case because I'm going to be, you know, experimenting with the crimping here. So, all right, so I'm going to set this up and uh, go in here and cut the wires and stuff, get ready, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the pigtail and crimp these on. And then also um, crimp the new uh, plug on the other side of the uh, of the pigtail. All right, I already did one of the wires. Um, I wanted to save some time. Um, you guys didn't have to see you know me doing both the wires, but uh, I did one of them to, just to make it. So I already knew how to know how to do it. So here I'm going to strip the end of this one here. I'm going to put the uh, oh, second. now this is the uh, part at the uh, wire and the, uh, the end goes on. Snip this off a little bit. Just put these on here now, tighten it up a little bit. All right, so we'll stay on here. Now this uh, crimper is not made for this, but it'll do. All right, so hope you can see this. Squeeze this. Okay, this is as tight as I can go. In order to release, you have to really crimp it tight, but this is not a crimper for these ends, so... Okay. 
This little screw here is supposed to be the screw to release it, but sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, there it is. Crimp. I don't know if it's focusing or not. And this part goes in here. All right, so here's the uh, first one I did. So the plastic dip got into the uh, area right here where uh, water can get into it. So hopefully, uh, you know, keep the contact from getting corroded from moisture getting in there if it does. Um, you know, bikes being where all the wiring is, ex most wiring is exposed and you're riding, you know, out in the rain, uh, water can get in there and corrode the uh, contacts. So this is the uh, first one, and I tried it out to see you know, how it would work. So now I'll show you guys what I did. I just took some uh, painter's tape, and I put a layer on the very top of this washer here, and pressed down on the... Um, on the contact to push the wire in as far as it can go. And then I put a piece of wire here so I know where to stop uh, with the, uh, how far I should dip it into the uh, plastic dip, plastic dip. And then uh, it takes about four hours for it to cure. And when it's done, then uh, I'll uh, show you uh, the results. So right now I'm going to uh, show you guys how I how to dip it into the uh, plastic dip. Be a little careful here so I don't spill it on anything. So what you what you do is uh, just take it. around here so I can see. Alright, so you just dip it in there. Oops. Slowly. That's it. So you just let it cure. I'll hang it up and I'll let it cure for four hours and uh, then we'll cut the tape away. So, uh, okay. So I'll be back when it's done. Alright, uh, it's cured. Let's see. 
we got here. And so the reason we're doing this is so it's a little extra protection. Keep the wire from the vibration of the bike plus a little bit from condensation so we could avoid corrosion. tough. Doesn't have to look pretty because it's going to be hidden inside the light anyway. And there we got it. So, uh, okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the, um, the length of the uh, wire. And um, then we're going to go and put the pins for the plug on the other side of the wire here. So. Alright, I'm going to set that up and I'll be back. Alright, um, I'm going to try to uh, explain here what I'm trying to achieve as far as putting this uh, Plasti Dip uh, rubber coating on the um, end of the wire here. Um, if you buy any kind of an appliance, um, if it's, uh, you know, expensive or, or inexpensive, most of them have their wiring inside uh, protected. Um, Okay, this is the cord, all right, going out. And what they have here is incorporated in the insulation is the uh, is this stopper here. And what you see here is they got a piece here that goes in here. And then they have a piece or a slot here that goes in here. So they have two two points of protection. So when you pull the cord out of the wall socket you're not pulling the cord um, and jeopardizing the uh, contacts here uh, on the wiring on inside the um, part here so when you pull you see what happens nothing because it's 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 put into these slots by this part here so now as you see now, if I take them out of here and I pull, you see how the wire is here? They're pulling. Okay, so then in a matter of time, these wires are going to break. So I'm just going back and forth. But by having this protection here, nothing moves. Just this. And this has got really thick insulation around the actual wires that are inside here. And it, 
so it has enough flexibility that the wires won't uh, break. This is what all appliances have, you know, protect the wiring. Now you get some cheap ones, okay, that will have a wire like this, okay, I'm going to show you here, and they'll tie a knot in the wire, okay. So then it'll go through whatever, you know, casing it has, like over here, this has, and it'll put it in here, and it'll close the case, this will be inside. So now when you pull the wire, none of this is being moved, okay, this is inside. What's being moved now is this, okay, so you pull this, and you have this here. And this is stopping it from pulling so you don't pull you know the wires out of your contact here so now with the the light okay what the problem is having this all right you can't use it with the light because with the bulb going into the socket okay now this is in the socket of the light in the base of the light okay so now, when you put the bulb in, the spring, you know, I explained before, it holds the bulb tight into the socket. So when you're pushing in to the bulb in the socket, this wire moves, okay? The wire moves in, okay, and compressing the spring, and then it keeps it tight, okay? So what's happening is when you push it, this is coming out the end of the housing, all right? So it needs to have that movement. Otherwise, if it don't, and you push the bulb in, this is going to get all crimped in here. In fact, with the wire so stiff, it's not going to even bend. So, and this can put some tension on the fitting here too. You see how it bent just by, just by uh, moving the wires around. So, well, this will work on most um, applications. This will not work on this one because this wire has to move back and forth as the bulb pushes the wire, the wire in. See? And then this wire comes out of the housing. So, in order to keep the vibration of the motorcycle and also the moving of the wire you know for whatever reason you're washing your bike or whatever these, these wires are still going to be moving out there um, I thought that using this plastic dip rubber coating um, will help with that problem so it has give here we able to go back and forth and yet it's not moving this back and forth you know moving the contact here so what I'm gonna do now I'm going to the hardware store and I'm gonna see if I can get some rubber grommets because the hole in the back of the housing um, is kind of big so the wire goes through the hole here and you see how loose it is here which doesn't really make a difference it's not gonna it's gonna be all right now that I put that rubber coating here but water can get in here still so the water may not penetrate the rubber coating you know at the tip here of the wire at the end of the wire but the housing is gonna get water in it and it may cause uh, you know some kind of um, um, grounding or whatever and it will sh make it short out so I'm going to see if I can get a, a couple of grommets, rubber grommets that will at least keep it, some moisture out of there and uh, keep the actually keep the wire still uh, less vibrating back and forth so that's why I wanted to show you guys this um, so you understand uh, what I'm trying to do um, and um, I hope this helps.
So I'm gonna go get those grommets and we can get back to work here. Cause I wanna ride my bike. All right, we're back from the um, hardware store. I got a couple grommets. Here it is here. So, uh, that's what I'm going to put into that hole where the uh, wire goes through. Now, uh, let me show you something here. Now, the, the hole in the uh, housing is really big. See that? There's a lot of play. I already put one in already. So, uh, I wanted to put the grommet in there to help stop water from getting in there as much as possible and to keep the wire a little bit more, you know, stable. So, uh, when I went to the hardware store, I brought my wires with me and, uh, But I found out here by putting the uh, plastic dip rubber coating on here, it it made it a little. You see how the insulation is and how much thicker it is here. Made it a little thicker. So now when the bulb, the spring, and this goes into that socket, and then the bulb goes into the socket, it pushes this in here, and an added benefit by pushing it in here. The rubber coating and the grommet, it seals it better. So it keeps the moisture out or water. You know, if you're riding in the rain or washing the bike. So I looked out two ways here. It's by having it like this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to Put the grommet in. And there's enough space around the uh, around the grommet and the housing where the the uh, spring will fit around it. So what I'm gonna do now is I put the springs in. for the stop tail light. And this is the stop tail light bulb. All right, the spring on the other side. Keep moving out of the camera, sorry guys. I look at the uh, housing and I'm not paying attention to where it's going. And then, let's get that ball in there. There it is. So, hopefully, this will solve the problem of the vibration. And also keep the water out. Okay, and I got that done. Before I bring it to the bike, I'm going to put the, uh, the lens in. And I want to take it and put a lens in and take a chance of it, it uh, falling on the ground and breaking because here's the lens. And it's not plastic, it's glass.
like the old days. It falls on the ground. It's all good done. It's over. So, all right. So let's we'll see what we can do here. We'll put the. Tight the uh, the screws first. Put a couple drops on the screws. Gasket will stay in place here. Careful here so I don't slip and scratch the powder coating. Keeps on tightening. It's compressing the uh, gasket, I guess. All right. So there we have it. I'm gonna bring it over to the bike. 
and put it on the bracket and then do the uh, rest of the wiring.